Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Five Minutes in GI, a show that we have designed to address the most frequently asked questions about GI disorders in just under five minutes. I am your host, Alyssa Sutton. I am the program coordinator at the International Foundation for Gastrointestinal Disorders, otherwise known as IFFGD. Today, I am so honored to welcome one of our guests, Dr. Justin Brandler. Dr. Brandler is a GI physician in Seattle at Virginia Mason Franciscan Health, and he is also one of IFFGD's junior academicians. He focuses on neurogastroenterology as well as motility disorders. Dr. Brandler, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for having me, Alyssa. It's always a great joy to work with IFFGD, so thanks for having me. Absolutely. So today's question is, what are some ways that people with IBS can improve the sensitivity in their bowel and or be able to improve the control of their bowels? Yes, this is a very important question that gets asked a lot. And there's a lot of information out there and also a lot of misinformation that we can try to address in the short time together. So um, when we talk about neurogastroenterology, a lot of people think, what, what is that? What do you do? So the connection between our brain and our gut is very rich. And many would be interested to know that there's as many nerve cells or neurons in our gut as there is in the spinal cord. And so there's a lot of really rich interplay and connection um, between the two. Um, one of the metaphors I use is kind of a symphony of connection of a conductor up here connecting with the orchestra down here and there's a complex interplay between. The other metaphor that I find helpful for this management type discussion question is, as a neurogastroenterologist, I'm both a plumber, a glorified plumber as a gastroenterologist, as well as kind of an electrician and working on that neurological connection between the two. So sometimes at the beginning, especially for patients with IBS and constipation predominance, so hard, lumpy, bumpy stools, we actually focus a bit more on the plumbing to help the sensitivity of the bowels. So we really want to get things flowing and moving better with a variety of different tools, whether it be dietary tools or medication sometimes, sometimes even some supplements and things like that can be helpful when done with guidance. Um, the converse is true. So for diarrhea, for example, instead of the flow is too much through the plumbing system, we need to actually slow the plumbing down. And that can also be done through similar uh, maneuvers, whether it's nutrition or, um, or medication focused. Now, the electricity factor is kind of interesting because sometimes even if we get the plumbing going better in terms of, you know, from point A to point B and the stool consistency is better, some patients still have pain and a lot of discomfort and that sensitivity to the bowels where there's too many messages being sent from the gut to the brain. And it's like the conductor has hearing aids and they're set too, too high and they just respond to everything, any type of gut movement, which just isn't normal. Mm -hmm. And that's what you experience. So in those cases, sometimes we use medications, for example, called neuromodulators, which is kind of adjusting those signals being sent electrically from the gut to the brain. Um, also, there are a lot of really evidence-based tools for brain gut directed therapies, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, gut-directed hypnotherapy or meditation visualization, and other tools. Now, because it's so complex, even though I focus on being a glorified plumber and an electrician, in an era of integrated care, I also specialize in making a lot of friends and knowing when to ask for their help. Mm -hmm. So, for example, GI psychologists or people who focus on psychology or therapy in general, we can help reach out to them to help modulate those brain gut connections. Um, sometimes in the pelvic floor world, we have to reach out to our general contractors like our colorectal surgeons to help us. Sometimes it's pelvic floor physical therapists to really get us a nice brain gut symphony of connection of the brain um, to the gut to evaluate and how to get stool uh, 
out in an easy form. So it's a it's a team sport um, and it takes a village, but here at Virginia Mason Franciscan Health, we're building a metropolis for these patients. Um, and it's a lot of fun, but it can be a lot of, um, a very scary for patients. And we really wanna provide that really holistic and supportive environment for them. So I really appreciate these questions. They're so important and always feel free to reach out to your provider for more details. Thank you so much, Dr. Brandler. That was very, very helpful. I loved that you not only focused on the medication aspect, but you also brought in the therapies that could also help the patients. I know that this was helpful for me personally as a patient with IBS, but I think that it's also gonna be helpful to the patients and our viewers as well. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me. Um, there's so many amazing providers out there that are uh, ready and willing to help. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. So that is all the time that we have for today. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And as always, if you have a question after watching this video, please feel free to leave a comment below, or you can email us directly at ifgd at ifgd.org, and we'll do our best to answer your question in another episode of 5 Minutes in GI.